Thanks for tuning in to the Women's Vibrancy Code, a podcast dedicated to helping women move from exhausted to energized, balance their hormones, and feeling turned on by their life, their lover, and themselves. I'm your host, Mariah Brown. I'm a Yale and functional medicine trained women's health expert, midwife, mom, keynote speaker, and self-made entrepreneur. I'm the founder of my signature program, the Women's Vibrancy Code. So sit back, relax, and let's chat about your energy, hormones, libido, and embracing your feminine power. Oh, and you might want to have pen and paper to take some notes on some of these episodes. For those listening to the Women's Vibrancy Code podcast, welcome back. Today, I have Katie Bramlett with me. She's the CEO and co-founder of We Shape and the host of Feeling Lighter podcast. We are going to be digging into what it looks like to approach our health and our well-being. Sometimes that might mean release of excess weight, but not through the lens of weight loss programs. Let's talk about doing this through the lens of health and longevity and self-care and self-love. You are obviously welcome to comment down below, ask questions real time. If you're listening in the podcast, you're always welcome to reach out. As a reminder, please leave a review. Please share this episode with anyone that you feel like needs to listen. And with that, hello, Katie. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, okay, let me read your bio and then we'll get the show on the road. And as always, I have no idea what we will cover, but I'm sure it's going to be spectacular and hopefully inspiring. And there will always be that moment where our listeners go, ah, that's why I listened to that episode that I really needed to hear that. So like I said, Katie is the CEO and co-founder of, co- of We Shape and the host of Feeling Lighter podcast by We Shape. With a background in psychology and excellent skills with infrastructure and operations, Katie concentrates on the goal that you should strive to feel better in your body, not focusing on how to change your body. With over 20 years of experience, Katie is passionate about social change and is leading We Shape's brand mission of bringing awareness to the toxic weight loss culture. Her entire company and product is rooted in intention, movement, community, and beliefs. She aims to help people bring self-love and emotional intelligence to fitness and to create self-awareness through meaningful conversations. Katie and her team deliver customized training and nutrition plans and provide each member with personalized workouts. I love this. And for those of you that have been in my world for a while, many know that Kathleen Cameron was a client of mine as she kind of went through her journey of releasing a hundred pounds. But once again, it was not about the weight loss experience. I love that you said it was not focusing on how to change your body, but instead, how do we love ourselves more deeply? How do we change our identity? And then of course, for me through the health lens, let's look at cellular well-being and detoxification and gut health and hormonal well-being, and of course, all of those things, when they're optimized, end up with more optimized weight, as well as energy and vitality and sleep. So Katie, I'm curious, go back to the, your, your origin story. There must be a moment for you in your life that sparked interest in this topic in particular. I'm curious if we could go there first. Absolutely. Yeah, there was a big moment, actually, or a sequence of moments over a number of years. Um, My co-founder and I actually used to run a body transformation company. So the entire intention behind that company was exercise programs and and body transformation weight loss. Um, And we had thousands of people go through our program, lose well over 100 pounds, many of them. Um, we had made the Inc. 500 three years in a row. We were scaling our team. I like to tell people my Instagram life looked amazing. (laughs) Um, the inside, (laughs) I didn't feel so great and I couldn't put my finger on it. And it was like a little whisper of like, 
we know you're getting a lot of validation for your business success. We know you're getting a lot of validation in your quote unquote health success. Um, but you're not, you're not aligned. And what are you going to do about that? And I was like, well, I can't give all this up. That would be insane. <laughs> and then I just said, well, you know, clearly this voice is just getting louder. And so I started investigating that a little bit more. And I think the thing that sparked that was I would watch thousands of people lose a ton of weight and they were never really satisfied. Mm -hmm. And I had these moments where I was like, we are think we're helping people, but I wonder if we really are. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder how sustainable this is. Um, having people feel bad about themselves and using that as motivation to be on a strict diet plan when the science tells us that the diet doesn't work anyway, just it didn't even add up logically. It added up from the the lens of our culture. Like it all mm -hmm. made sense in the context of our culture, but in the context of like emotional well-being and even from the science perspective, I was like, this isn't really helping people long term. Mm -hmm. So that's when it was funny at the same exact time. So I was like, we need a shift mentality. If people can't accept who they are in the body they have today, they will not be able to accept who they are in the body they have 100 pounds lighter. It doesn't even matter. If they don't love themselves today, the weight they think that the weight loss is the thing. I promise it's not. And what I started realizing is people were really searching for, am I valuable? Am I worthy? Mm -hmm. Am I lovable? And they thought that the weight loss was the vehicle. It's like, or the amount of likes I got on my Instagram or the diet that I was doing or the job that I had or the Inc. 500 that I made three years. And those were not the things that were fulfilling that. And so at the same time, my co-founder, he was going through his own issue with our company um, on the movement side. He was like, I don't really believe that these crazy exercise programs are actually helping people. People are still in a lot of pain. They're getting injured. This isn't a sustainable program. And also um, there's no industry standard in personal training. You could go to a personal trainer. I could go to a personal trainer. My personal trainer could be finishing up their doctorate degree in physical therapy. Yours could have completed a weekend course. There's no <laughs> standard. And yeah. so he was like, we need better standards in the fitness industry for what is quality exercise and quality movement that's sustainable for the long haul. And the only way to get that is to qualify a personal trainer and spend $1,200 a month. Well, that is that is not that is not everyone's reality. So how do we create a product that could offer that reality for a fraction of the cost so more people have accessibility to that? Mm -hmm. And so he was birthing the movement part of it. I was birthing the mentality part of it. And for a little while, we were going back and forth. And I was like, wait a minute, let's put these together. <laughs> it's not your way or my way. It's actually what a combination. And then that was sort of the birth of We Shape from those two, from those two lenses. Wow. So you kind of threw, does it feel like you threw a dynamite into the business that was perceptively successful and profitable, but not? It didn't feel good ethically and didn't feel good in your heart of hearts. So it's like you threw a dynamite into it, left the money for the sake of rebuilding something that of course will be profitable again, but doing it in a way that feels like it actually serves society with what, pe what, you're, what both of you were feeling like individuals actually need. Um, absolutely. That's mm -hmm. exactly what we did. And um, I have had our CFO and a number of people along the way say, this is a huge financial risk, um, you know, and I and I have just looked back and said, to be honest with you, I have more peace today than I had when I had all of that profit. So I'm going to keep going down this path until the universe says, absolutely not, you're not doing this anymore. But that's not the message I've been given. And and, you know, along the way, when we are making the transformation, like it was hard, like even from the investor perspective, people don't under. They just want to know that they're getting their money, right? That Which is understandable. That's your business. But mm. very few, a, a number of people we connected with were wonderful, but, but very few did actually care about like with the, the kind of sh huge overhaul we were trying to make in the fitness industry. Um, and then second to that, a lot of people said, no way, I the, you're not promising weight loss. Like there's no way this business will be successful unless you can promise some type of weight loss. And I said, okay, thanks for your opinion. You know, it's like, it is what it is. So I have had all of the success and the financial freedom. And I have had the other side of a lot more risk and a, 
a lot more anxiety and, and, and I, but I honestly, I have a lot more peace today than I ever did in that other company ever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which just proves that it's not those things that create that internal peace. Right. Right. So someone can chase the money. Someone can sh chase the weight loss. Someone can chase the, the degrees. But if we're not internally content with who we be and who we see in the mirror, then all of it is just going to be a continual chase. And so how do you describe We Shape today? Um, we're focusing on movement and mentality. So getting people to try to shift their lens of what exercise really should be used for. Mm -hmm. um, and thinking about, you know, <clears throat> a, a program that can cater to what your body needs. So we have a technology driven real time. Um, it's like having a, a very high quality personal trainer in your living room. So we can adjust movements in real time and get people like a quality movement. I'm, and when I say that people are like, oh, it's not going to be a good workout. I'm like, it is a good workout. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. It's more that we're focusing on what quality movement looks like. We're not trying to do the no pain, no gain, just push through. We're actually saying no to the opposite of that, like tune in. You know, one of my favorite questions when people come in is, well, how many days a week should I work out? I'm like, I don't know. What if you didn't sleep one night or what? that's you're not a robot. You're a human. Yeah. So we're just so trained and conditioned in our culture that exercise has to be crazy and this and that. And if you didn't do it this way, then it didn't count. And we're like, no, 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 let's focus on movement. Let's focus on maybe you're going on a hike with a friend and connecting out of joy. Like we're trying to really shift even just the idea of why we're doing it in the first place. Yep. And then I the mentality it. side is just shifting um, a lot of those beliefs that we have, right? Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think at the same time as we were transitioning from that business to this business, I was also doing a personal transition around my obsession with with health optimization. It mm -hmm. got, it just it got to a point where it was like it consumed all of my thoughts. Mm -hmm. But I thought that I was being healthy because I was doing everything that every functional medicine practitioner told me to do, which was wonderful. But at the same time, I was suffering psychologically from it because I was obsessing about like, did I eat the right thing? Is what is this macro micronutrient content? What, what, it's like I wasn't even enjoying my life and I didn't even realize it. Yeah. And so yeah. it's also shifting that mentality around um, thinking about how, you know, thinking about health and wellness in a, the perspective of not just diet and exercise, but around connection with friends. Like health and wellness is not just diet and exercise. <laughs> <laughs> our culture thinks it is, but it's not. It's like absolutely so much more than that. Mm -hmm. So that's a long way of saying like, we're really just trying to focus on like these underlying beliefs, sort of these cultural constructs that we're all a part of, the reason why we're moving our body and um, just really evaluating, like doing a, a whole overhaul. I love it. I love it. And in regard to body movement, if you exist in a female body versus a male body, that body movement is going to be very different. If you're in your ovulatory time versus your bleeding time, do you allow for adjustments based on a woman's cycle in the, in the midst of what's kind of prescribed for her body? I movement? mean, technically we, you can, when you log in, you can just scale up or down in the movements as often as you need to throughout the workout. So it, it really okay. can be like a day to day thing. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and again, the movement part is only part of what we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. we also have a big community element in, in our mm -hmm. program as well. So people can log in every day and have community calls. So we have different topical conversations or we have phys like we, one of, uh, the people on our team, my co-host, Dr. Lisa Folden is a physical therapist. She hosts Q and a calls. So if you have movement related questions, um, we're actually going to be launching, what we're calling movement snacks and recovery routines. So these are like lighter, just, I just, I don't really want to work out today, but I'd like to move my body a little bit. So that's coming out soon. So that way people can have more variety based on what their needs for yeah. that particular day. And it sounds like most of it is self-paced and virtual. So it's yeah. geographically independent. Yes. Yes. And it's is all, there, we have an app. Yeah. Yeah. And is there a certain demographic that is definitely kind of migrating to we shape right now? Is it mainly young professionals? Is it men? Is it women? Is there a certain age range that you're seeing predominantly using the app? I mean, at this, I mean, there are always a variety, but at this point in the game, predominantly, I would say women over 40. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's these women who are like, I've done every diet and exercise plan. I've done it everyone else's way. I want to do it my way. And I yeah. and I want to unsubscribe from this intense, like, you know, overachieving, you know, cyclical weight loss planning. Like, it's just, I just want to be, you know, yeah. I just yeah. want to come home to me. And if people come to We Shape and all they get is a deeper connection with themselves and what they think they should do, my job has been done well. That, that that's really I just want people to to take a step towards coming home to self and not feeling like they have to do it somebody else's way. Yep. And is there is there advice or suggestions from a nutritional perspective that are mixed in? Are are there any lab testing? Like in, I'm thinking in my world. I would much rather look at an individual's adrenal well-being and that's going to definitely shift how much that I'm open to them pushing themselves from a cardiovascular perspective. If they're in adrenal exhaustion or adrenal fatigue, we're going to shift. Yeah. So I'm curious, is there any personalization that way with like not macro counting or diet calorie restriction or weighing your food, but are there any resources in the midst of we shape for you know, broad strokes of, or is there a team nutritionist? Is there adjustments with personalized testing? Any of that stuff? Yeah. So I, in the beginning in our bio, I had wondered if piece of, a piece of my old bio got in because we don't do nutrition. Okay. Um, and at this point I have really intentionally done that because I have realized that in order for people to have extremely customized planning, they, people have to have resources. And I want to figure out a way to, um, you know, not be so stuck into the demographic of only people who have resources can totally benefit. So what we're offering is a little bit more of educational resources. So a lot of our podcasts will have various guests on that can offer some of those, the information that could help people. And I, I also have noticed at the root of it, when we help shift the mentality uh, I feel like a lot of things sort of adjust, right? So mm-hmm. it to me, that is one of the root things. And we don't have to necessarily do a ton of testing. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I'm, I, I have a functional medicine practitioner I see for my hormones. Like I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that. I'm just saying in terms of what I want to offer inside of my company is, is I would like to figure out a way. And I don't have all the answers for the future because we are a startup company and we just sort of launched not too long ago. Um, a way that like people don't necessarily have to have an abundance of resources to be able to benefit from what we're offering. Yep. Uh, we also, in our community calls, we do have expert guests that will come on and offer special calls just for our community. So sometimes we'll have guests on the podcast and then we'll invite them in to do like an expert uh, Q&A with our members so that our members can have more like personal touch and um, accessibility to that. But yeah, um, yeah I, I I really want to focus a lot more on like the beliefs and the mentality because I feel like people really do want us to be like, well, what should I eat? And I'm like, I want to focus on this first. So I'm just yeah. trying to do our best to focus on where I feel like the biggest problems are and how we can include the most people. Yeah, I love it. So they can come to you for the mentality and the body movement piece, and then they can come to me for the functional tests and the hand holding and meet with my team dietitian yeah. nutritionist, and we have a win win scenario. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about. Um, you mentioned the inner game. You mentioned mentality, intention. I'm curious, why is that such an important piece um, in someone's health journey? I mean, even through my own personal journey, I have discovered that when I wake up in the morning and I'm doing something because somebody else thinks I should do it, Mm -hmm. never really going to be fulfilled. So if I wake up and I'm like, I want to do this exercise program because I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay, why do you want to lose the 20 pounds? Well, because then I will be more valuable or like, it's like it all comes down to that like self-validation, I will feel good with who I am if I adhere mm-hmm. to the standards and get the external validation. Mm-hmm. And I think what, what I've discovered is that when we continue down the path of just like checking the boxes for the external validation, okay, I got the partner that I wanted. I have the kids. I have the I have the body that I thought I wanted. I have the clothes that I people think I should wear. It's like, we again, we think that that's going to really 
give us that sense of deep fulfillment. And I've just noticed with so many people who've gone through our old business and also through my own personal experience that it doesn't touch that part. Mm -hmm. And so um, the mentality shift and the intention for me is about what does it look like when I wake up in the morning and I say, I want to... I want to have a deeper connection with me. I want to know that person. And I often use this analogy of like, I feel like we are born with two different dials on the inside. Um, One is like this internal voice that is trying to constantly like show us our, our next steps in life. And one is the external dial. Like I always say, it's really funny. If we had a baby in this podcast with us right now, their internal dial is a 10. They don't care that we're recording a podcast They're If they, they're hungry, they're going to be screaming, right? But as we get older, the internal dial gets turned down the and the, you know, the culture, the conditioning, the beliefs, the external dial gets turned up and we start living from that space. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that one could ever be turned all the way up or one could ever be turned all the way down. Mm -hmm. But if go ahead, we just we can't I can't unless I'm going to go live in a cave by myself, the external dial, it's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, and from my experience, I've been lucky enough, like my internal dial was turned down to one, but it was still there. It was just whispering to me. Mm -hmm. And so what I really think about intention is how do I access that internal dial and how do I turn that up a little bit? Like that's my intention. And when I act from that space, my behaviors and the things I decide to do are very, very different. Mm, so good. And to go back to this menstrual rhythmic piece, our internal dials are much louder when we are in our second half of our cycle. So our PMS time and our bleeding time. If you imagine like the, I interviewed um, the founders of Red School and I loved that interview for the podcast. For those that are listening and you want to go back and find it, we can put it in the show notes. But this concept of the lights are turned on inside when we move into what's called our luteal phase or a PMS time and into our bleeding time. Whereas when we're in the week after we bleed and we're in our ovulatory time, the lights are on external. We're so much more resilient. And so it's, it's taking all of this into consideration to go, where are you right now in life? If you look at the last decade, the last five years, the last year, the last season, the last month, the last week, the last day, the last hour, how much is being expressed where the focus is all with the lights on outside and mm -hmm. people pleasing versus where are we allowing this balance and seasonality and rhythmic nature of, no, there is time and space for our internal dial to be the focus. And in your scenario, it was this big career shift of we're going to let go of this very successful company and rebuild a completely new idea in your quest for no, 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 no. My internal dial is a priority at this point, and I want to inspire others to turn theirs up. Yeah. And like this theme in my personal life has happened for my whole life, right? So uh -huh. I get in a belief around this is how it should be. This mm -hmm. is the best way, optimal way, and I'm going to do it that way. So for mm -hmm. instance, I can even share when I had my first daughter, I was doing a home birth. I wanted unmedicated, natural home birth. And I attempted that for 46 hours. And then they <laughs> finally told me, you're not going to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. And I was devastated. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to get a C-section actually. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget feeling like I lost that identity of this natural mother who gave birth to her child at home. I, and I had so much shame and guilt and all of these things associated with this because I was so stuck in the identity that in order for me to be a good person, mm -hmm. I had to go down this optimal path of doing a home birth. Then I get pregnant with my second child and I'm like, well, I, I hadn't let the identity go yet. So I was like, now I'm going to do a, a V back at home. And I had this incredible midwife because a number of midwives said, we're not doing that for you based on how we, uh, you know, evaluated your first birth. But I had this midwife who was like, I'm going to try. And, you know, it was really interesting. Halfway through that experience, I had this acupuncturist that I had worked with multiple times a week call me. And she said, I need to know that you're open-minded about something. And I said, why are you calling me at home on a Saturday? She said, I have very strange feeling that your natural birth is not going to happen. And you're going to need to be open-minded so that you can enjoy your birth and have another C-section. Hmm. And I said, 
wait, you're telling me this? I thought we're on the same team that like, we don't do C-sections. We do natural deliveries. And she's like, that's not what we're after, Katie. We're after a healthy baby. Like Mm -hmm. drop the identity. So I'll never forget. I went into labor with the second one. And I promised myself, you have a voice on the inside that knows what you need. Are you able to access that voice despite the identity that your ego wants to cling to? And I said, okay, I'm going to try that. So this is why I say mindset and intention is so important because if I was acting from the old mindset, I, you know, that didn't do, that didn't serve me. So I acted from that space and I'll never forget. There was a very clear moment in that birth where I said, please move into the C-section. You're not doing this. And I did. And I had an incredible experience, but it took my ego saying, it's okay to have a C-section. You're not a bad mom for having a C-section. It's okay that you're not doing it this way that you really wanted to let it go. Let it go. I don't know. I don't know if you know, but I'm a midwife. Oh, I did know that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so I attended births for 17 years, home births, hospital births, birthing center births, births in West Africa and Haiti and Nick in Central America. And absolutely. I feel like so much of our life's lessons we can learn or I learn through being around birth. And it's like, where are we clenching the steering wheel so tight with our idea of what success is and is not to the point of our own demise mm-hmm. for the, to the point of our own you know, journey of victimhood and even compromising the well-being of our baby, right? Yeah. Versus just being able to say, you know what? There's my energy. There's the energy of the universe or God. There's the energy of in the, with birth. There's the energy of this baby that I don't con- control. And there's the energy of all the people that are there supporting it and their birth trauma and their birth stories. And, and we get to just go, here's, here's what I would love and also be in the energy of allowing. Yeah. Um, And so it sounds like you then relate that to someone's journey of weight loss, to someone's journey with um, how they define success physically, whether it's a body looking a certain way or being able to lift a certain amount of pounds or um, the scale giving a specific number. I mean, exactly, because you can have the quote unquote, you know, body type that you think you want. You can even have labs that are perfect. You can have the best hormones. You can get the best sleep. You can do all of the things and you can still be miserable. And so that is something I think I, this is why when, when we're talking about the work that we're doing, I have so much passion to be talking about the mentality side because I lived in that optimization health world for years. And there's a lot of validity and amazing things that come with it, but I was still miserable. Yeah. And so it's to me, that's why I want to go there with WeShape, because I know that if we can even just shift and offer more self-kindness, self-gratitude, self-openness, right? Like there's so much we don't even know about diet and exercise and nutrition, like just pure openness and not getting so attached to one specific thing. Yep. Still like we, the, I just really believe in that deep inner knowing. And I just think women especially have been conditioned out of accessing that. Yep. And so I just want to like not devalue the importance of nutrition or, you know, optimal health or none of that. I don't want to devalue that. But what I want to do is I want to say that can exist, but I really want to see if we can help you get that stronger connection with self and that deeper inner knowing. Because unfortunately, our culture and society and exercise and diet culture have talked you out of that. That's mm-hmm. why people, when they come to me, they say, how many times a week should I be exercising? That's why they ask that question because they've given all of those, those things away to someone else to direct them. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I just want to bring people back to themselves. I love it. I love it. And I don't know about you, but I feel like we can't just exercise our way. We can't just nutrition our way. We can't just mindset our way either. There's got to be a balance of all of it. But once again, if the the goal or the objective is foundationally stemming from fear or lack of worthiness or looking for external validation, there's never going to be an arrival point. Uh, No. And unfortunately, 
the culture that in the society that we live in has delivered a lot of messages that keep women small and that keep women away from that voice. And the more I tune into the voice, the more I realize, oh my gosh, basically everything in my life is backwards. Mm -hmm. Like I joke with my friends. So my best friend and I, we, this is how we used to hang out. We used to meet at the grocery store on Sundays with our children (laughs) because we didn't want to inconvenience partners. And we would do our meal planning and grocery shopping and hang out with each other in the aisles. Like that was our free time together. And we laugh so much now about that, that like we couldn't even give ourselves permission to go sit down and have a cup of coffee together Hmm. because we were just so listening to something outside of ourselves that said more, harder, work harder, sleep less. Like and my life is so different now. Like I used to fill my weekends with checklists. And now I'm like, if there's two things on the checklist, I'm devastated. I'm like, weekends are for resting, for reading, for nature, for like, I am. Like, do you, and I, then I laugh. I think about like, do you see moms just sitting down and relaxing? <laughs> no, I was just, I'm laughing because just this morning, I, right before the, right before I pushed record, I was telling Katie, I was just volunteering at my kids at my nine-year-old school because she, her class play is this week. And it was so refreshing just to sit there and there was no work. My phone was away. My kids are in Waldorf schools. So it's very whimsical. It's very gentle. There's, you can, I can feel the rhythm and we're putting together costumes and, and they're doing their dress rehearsal. And I, and I, I, the school is walking distance and I was walking home and taking in fresh breaths of air. And I just went, you know, this, it's these moments that for me, I go, ah, that's what success feels like. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, it's an, it for some, it might be generating the the eight figures. For some, it might be finishing all the degrees and having all the master's degrees. It might be the I don't know whatever insert whatever it is for you, and maybe that is it, but it's not all of it. Yeah, yeah. And particularly for women in our forties, this is a chapter where the inner critic comes alive for a long time span. I mean, perimenopause can last as long as 15 years. And there's this unapologetic nature that comes out. We go from the caterpillar into the chrysalis and we become goo and it can be uncomfortable. And it's a time where we kind of hash out the aspects of our life that are fulfilled and not fulfilled and finished and unfinished and who do I want to be moving forward? And whether or not you wanted to be a mother, mourning the loss of, of ovulation and the ability to bear more children. That is a transitional phase. And there is some grieving that goes with that. There's also celebration. Mm-hmm. And so as we go through that chapter and we continue to just crack the whip for the type A personalities, What I see on the other end is that they have a horrible experience of menopause. They're unfulfilled. They push, 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 and there's never a sense of joy. They emasculate their husbands and they end up really unhappy in their marriages. And then they come to me because they don't have any libido. Do you see all of this? Can you relate to it? Um, I mean, I think that I see what I see is that a lot of people who identify as female are overworked. Um, underappreciated mm-hmm. and searching for their value through a construct that tells us this is how you are valuable. Mm-hmm. And this is why I always go back to like, if I can help someone strengthen that inner knowing, which I think is a lifelong journey. It's not like I've arrived there. I struggle with this still every day. Like, are you going to do what somebody wants you to do? Or are you going to sit in the quiet self for a moment and, and really think about or feel what you need to do? Right. I, I struggle with this every day. It's a practice. I'm unwinding four decades of, of, uh, of you know, conditioning. Yeah. Um, but I do see that <clears throat> that is sort of the first step is that intention behind how do I connect with that inner voice? And the thing that's hard about this is oftentimes that inner voice is going to be counter to what that external validation will be offering you. Mm-hmm. And so not only... <laughs> is it going to be like, it's going to be a little painful, but the other side of it is, is, is so 
is so gratifying in my opinion anyway it, it it does it's that deep sense of like okay that was hard but i stayed true to myself and i think that speaking to what i see a lot is so much self abandonment mm-hmm. um so much self abandonment for other and yeah. one of the thing that really struck me especially recently with my two daughters being 6 and 10 is that they're not going to do what i say they're going to do what I do. Mm-hmm. And if they see a mom who was overworked and underrested and um, n- doing everything else that everybody else wants, then that's what they'll do. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm hosting another women's. Re- so I, I love hosting women's retreats. I feel like I get the opportunity to step into being a midwife again. And the next one is in April in Ashland, Oregon. And there are four women flying in. Um, that are in their forties and fifties. And for, and, I mean, there's lots more, but these four women are the, I'm blown away that all four of them, this is the first time ever in their life that they're doing something saying, I'm just going to prioritize me. I'm not going for a work trip. I'm not traveling with my children. I'm not traveling with my husband. I'm simply going to go get on an airplane and fly down to a new place in Southern Oregon and attend a three day retreat to get clarity on who do I want to be. And I'm sure they feel terribly guilty about it too. They feel confronted. They're scared shitless. They feel guilty. And, but there's also an excitement. Mm -hmm. And I just go, wow, how many are listening to this? To really ask yourself, so if you were to give them some guidance, what are some questions that they can ask themselves to really get cold, hard, and honest with some mirror work? (laughs) They go, am I actually prioritizing myself? How am I doing it? Like, okay, one said, I go and I get my hair done. I was, yeah, that I, I was just going to say getting your, going to the spa is not that. (laughs) <laughs> so what is it? How? What questions do you ask women to help them really get clear with, huh, what might that look like if it's completely foreign? They're overworked. They're serving, serving, serving. They have this certain construct of the role that women play. And they maybe have never actually prioritized themselves. And now that's what they're teaching their daughters unconsciously. I'm not saying this from the energy of blame. And definitely don't carry guilt, but it is this opportunity for you to listen in. And if you are one of those women to go, ah, is it time for change? Yeah. Um, I think the first thing that I would say is how do we cultivate Mm self-kindness and grace as we unravel and start to know that, wow, the way I did it before doesn't quite feel right. And I do want to go down a path. Typically, what I see is people will use shame, guilt, uh, judgment as ways to get them down this other new path. And I know because that's what I do and have done. And I always have to pause and go, Katie, a little bit more kindness. You can go Mm -hmm. down the path in kindness and grace and and self-acceptance, or you can go down the path with game, you know, uh, shame and guilt and judgment. Like, which one is it going to be? So first, I would just like to set an intention of self-kindness. Everyone is doing the best they know how to do today. Mm -hmm. Judging our way to the next step is painful. (laughs) It's going to be painful anyway. So let's just lighten the load a little bit. And then I would just say, it's okay that you have been living in a way that was not serving you. That's what you were told to do. And of course you're doing it that way. And just stop and ask yourself, like, if I woke up tom- tomorrow and my children were adults, is this is this the life I'd want them to live? This is the life I'm modeling. Is this the life I want them to live? Do I feel fulfilled? Do I feel connected to myself? Do I feel rested? Do I feel energized? Do I feel a lot of joy, right? Mm-hmm. And um, just asking those questions, I think, can can be kind of the first starting point. But I would really encourage people, and this is the work I'm personally doing in this moment today, is how do I do this with a little bit more self-kindness and grace? Because yeah. I'm just a human being. I, I'm just a human. Well, and I, I also appreciate that you brought up judgment. And I think particularly for women, 
it's self-judgment and also to become self-aware of where we judge other women. Yeah. And when there is often an undertone of women judging other women, I think we get to look at, ah, is this some of my own shadow work? Yeah. Am, am I, am I allowing myself to place judgment on another woman really because I judge myself? Yeah. And so there's, there's spaciousness for women in how we speak to ourselves, as well as for some women, how they look at and interact with and speak with other women. Absolutely. I think, you know, again, I think that a lot of women have been raised to be, it's like, I always just envision this like checklist, like, are you showing up this way? Are you showing up that way? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? And when we aren't meeting those things or we decide to say, wait a minute, that's not really serving me. Oftentimes it does come with judgment or when you are in that sort of overachieving, hyper fixated space, oftentimes we are judging other people for not doing it that way. Right. And so it takes a lot of, I try to remind myself that actually takes a lot of energy and what takes a lot less energy is openness and expansiveness and, and, and non-judgment like judging something takes a lot of your energy Mm. how do we just like live and let live how do we just allow people to be on their own paths in their own timing and just turn to ourselves right i think that we want to turn to other people's lives because then we're not going to face our own shit yeah so how do you just allow people to be have an intention of connecting with yourself in a more meaningful way and 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 just open up the path of expansiveness for that and I think that can help with a lot of the judgment stuff. Mm-hmm. And let and let live. Yeah. Okay. So for everyone listening, WeShape.com. Um, I'll I make actually sure have a talking. special link for your listeners. Oh, fun. Okay. Yes. If um, they want to try WeShape for two weeks for free, I can give you a special link. Yeah. Can you put it in the chat here on Zoom? I would love to. Yes. And I will edit it on the podcast document that the podcast team uses. And then for everyone watching this real time on Facebook, I'll put it in as a comment. Wonderful. Um, on the Facebook live. And then also it sounds like you guys exist predominantly in um, Instagram, but then there also is some Facebook. We're on, it, we're on all the social platforms. Our actually biggest platform is YouTube. Um, so we're YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and we actually have two social accounts. One is all focused on movement, which mm-hmm. is just at we shape. And the other is all focused on sort of this mentality side. So it's a lot of podcast clip and that's at the feeling lighter podcast. Okay. Um, so people can find us, um, on, on both channels and yeah, the, the we shape.com forward slash vibrancy code is, um, is the two week free trial if anyone wants to check out we shape right so once again we shape.com forward slash vibrancy code and i know that you guys are interviewing me on the podcast i don't know when that's scheduled but i'm sure we'll figure it out and it's going to be a lovely conversation i look forward to continuing more um any parting words anything that feels unsaid for those that are listening um well first of all i just want to offer gratitude for having me as a guest. I know that, you know, conversations like this can be challenging because it's like, I don't want women to ever feel like, oh, great. Another thing I need to work on. I really want women to feel like they're given permission to go their own path. That's Mm -hmm. what I really want to offer them. Even if the path looks vastly different than the landscape they thought that they were supposed to adhere to. So just trusting that inner voice and trusting that path and finding people who support you in that path, I think is, is a, is a really incredible experience and a, and a journey worth venturing into. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And thank you for allowing yourself to create such a large pivot. Yeah. When, When you knew in your heart of hearts, it's what society needed. Yes. Yeah. Right. I think sometimes we can get our blinders on when there's success and, you know, this feeling I haven't come this far, it's only come this far and there's all this money and there's all this cloud and team and to be able to go, well, but it, it doesn't align anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's not what I really believe in my heart of hearts that the clients need and Mm -hmm. how cool that you and your co-founder found it individually as well as collectively Mm -hmm. and you're on the same page. 
Yes. Yeah. And, and I'll just say, like, I think one of the things I've noticed about myself with these big changes was that um, I I think I'm constantly, and I think a lot of us do, is like, oh, well, I don't want to do that because I want to avoid the pain. And if I just do all of the right things in life, I will avoid the pain. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, the pain is is inevitable. So it's just like, pick your pain. Do you want the pain of unfulfillment or do you want the pain of having to deconstruct some of the beliefs and build that deeper relationship with self? Um, I think that there is a little bit of a misconception that if we do it the right way, we'll avoid the pain. But I think that growth just is growth and it just it just involves a little bit of pain sometimes. And just reminding ourselves that we're still okay to find the right people to support us through that. And just to reframe it, it might be that you and I just have kind of a different way of thinking here. I'm not, I'm not convinced, convinced that it always has to include pain. I think what I'm hearing, and at least the way I see it is there's always going to be seasons Mm -hmm. and there will always be a winter and someone might experience that winter time as feeling, maybe you identify it as pain, but I want to believe that it's not in, I mean, I guess there's many Buddhist teachings that say that pain is inevitable, but I don't know. I, I want to believe that it, that it doesn't have to be painful, but that we can surrender to knowing that there are seasons and there are ebbs and flows and it's all perfect and part of the journey. Yeah. I think it's more for me about like when some, it's like, I'm afraid of the feeling. Right. And, and and I think that's what it comes down to. And we use the word pain because we want to polarize and better understand what is actually happening. It doesn't have to be good or bad. It just mm-hmm. is right. Like, yeah. just like, we're just like a, we're like human beings are like a spectrum of emotions and a spectrum of seasons and, and sometimes sadness and heaviness. And these are normal human emotions. Right. And this idea that if I just do everything the right, what quote unquote right way, I will avoid those things. It's it it it's never really personally gotten me very far. It's like no, just let the sadness come in. Right. <laughs> just right. just mourn that. Just grieve that. Just accept that. Right. Mm-hmm. I think so much of it is trying to avoid it. And right. if I just do the right things, I won't have to feel that feeling. And I'm like, it's okay. Just let the sadness be there. Yeah, right. So the feelings are inevitable. It's possible that suffering, I don't know, maybe suffering's inevitable. I, I um when I gave birth to my second child, my pubic symphysis separated mm. and I had some pudendal nerve damage. And there was a really intense recovery. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget this moment. I was seeing my physical therapist and I kept relating to pain in that area of my body. And he took a pause and he goes, You know, Mariah. What if it's actually not pain? What if it's nerve regeneration? Mm. And you can identify it as being a sensation. Yeah. And I went, huh, that's really valid. I keep calling it pain, Mm -hmm. but really it's just simply sensation. And when I shifted my own mindset around how I saw it, it, it literally wasn't pain. Even for me, I've had three home births and, and I wouldn't necessarily call birth painful either. It was intense sensation. Yeah. But if I identified it as pain, I imagine I could experience pain. Yeah. But it, it's not what I experienced. It was actually a very ecstatic experience and, and orgasmic. <laughs> um, but it was intense sensation. Yeah. And so we get to go, huh, all right, in, in my journey of guilt and shame and and shifting my identif- my identity with what success looks like and um you know where where am i putting myself in a box that i'm calling it painful when really mm-hmm. it's just sensation it's just an emotion it's just a feeling it's just part of the journey and to allow ourselves a little bit more grace i love to take away the judgment to do it with more lighthearted joy and have some fun with it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate what you guys are creating and for your time. Um, This has been a delight. Hopefully everyone will go and grab their two weeks free of um, weshape.com forward slash vibrancy code and follow them on Instagram. Obviously, you're always welcome to reach out to me. If you're listening on the podcast, 
please give a review. Please give a five-star rating. Share with a friend, especially this episode. I imagine as you're listening, you're probably thinking, oh, I have this friend that really needs to hear this. And oh, there's that friend that really needs to hear it. So share. Give, give the love. All right. Thank you, Katie. Thank you.